I want to talk about nonlinear divisors. You remember which part of our working are the divisors, right? It's uh, this guy here. That's a divisor, and oh, we use the same thing. Okay, anyway, so those are the divisors. They're the things you're dividing by. So far, for the sake of simplicity, you've noticed every time I've given you linear ones, okay, linear divisors, but you don't have to divide by linear numbers any more than you have to divide by units all the time, right? I could divide by tens as well, okay? It obviously becomes a little more complicated because now you have to think, oh, how many 27s fit in here or here or here, right? So it takes more mental work, but there's no reason why it can't be done, okay? So what we'll do is, let's think of, let's go back to the original um, dividend over there. So if I had 3x cubed minus x squared plus 7x minus 4, okay? I can divide this by something larger than just a linear factor. I can divide by something, say, for example, quadratic. That has a higher power, just like this has a higher value over here if I just add more digits. Okay? So let's try and keep it nice and simple. Let's divide by x squared plus 2x plus 2. Okay, now, a greater degree of difficulty here. See what I did there? Uh, you have to think very carefully. Even with these ones over here, I was just going through and talking, and it's easy to mess up the minus signs, and you've got, just got more places for this to go wrong. But at least the one thing that's nice about this is the process is still the same, right? The strategy will still work. Out of all of these terms in the divisor, which is the most important one? It's the x squared. It's the leading term, isn't it? That's why we introduce language like this so we can quickly say it's that one, right? So I ask, how many x squared terms fit in here? 3x of them, okay? And so I go back and I do the same process. I'm now going to multiply through, doing it carefully. 3x cubed, 6x squared, 6x. Good, thumbs up. It, it is, right? It's literally, okay? I'm going to do my subtraction now. That cancels out as it should. Minus x squared minus 6x squared is minus 7x squared. This also comes along for the ride. That's going to be plus x and then take away 4. Okay? All right, back again. How many x squareds are in there? 7, uh, 7 minus 7. Minus 7? Yeah. yeah. Um, by the way, notice something that's happened, right? Before I even write down the next line, uh, what's up here? What's happened to the quotient? It's a, it's, it's a linear thing, isn't it? Hold on, think about that, right? When you took a cubic, degree 3, you divided by degree 1. You ended up with degree 2. Well, well this makes sense, doesn't it? If you take degree 3 and you divide by degree 2 instead, you should end up with degree one, that's just index laws, isn't it, okay? All right, just keep that in your mind. Let's continue. Multiply back, minus 7x squared, 14. minus 14x, minus 14. Yes, okay. Um, subtraction, these cancel, double negative, 15x plus 10. Okay. Now here's the next thing I want to notice. So just by increasing the level of the complexity of this question a little bit, there's more interesting things to um, observe. How many x squared terms fit into this? None. Just like uh, no x terms fit into here, right? No x squared terms fit into here. It's already too small. So this whole object, 15x plus 10, that is the remainder. When you can't divide anymore, you're like, oh, I can't fit 20 more 27s into whatever I end up with, then that's what your remainder is, right? Well, I can't fit any more x squareds in there, so that whole thing there is the remainder, okay? So we can actually uh, generalize a really important point here, um, which many students sort of, they're lost on this because they do so much of this. Like 95% of the time you're doing polynomial division will be by linear factors. I'll explain more why later. But when you divide by ones that aren't linear, here's how I would generalize this, okay? When dividing by a polynomial of degree n, 
So we've mostly been dividing by polynomials of degree one, but we just tried dividing by, the, by a polynomial of degree two, right? When dividing by a polynomial of degree n, the remainder is a polynomial with what degree? Think about it. Degree one divisor gave you a, a remainder of degree, look at it, zero. zero. There's no actual x terms, are there? Well, there's an x to the zero term. When you divide it by degree two, you end up with a remainder degree one. So the polynomial remainder will have, is a polynomial with degree always one less, always one less, n minus one. Wouldn't it be like maximum one less? Yes, so that's, the, yes. However, just generally speaking, this is that it's the biggest it can get. So if, if you come over here, right, when I said, oh, let's divide 20, uh, 1005 by 27, the remainder will be less than 27. Do you agree? Like that's the biggest it can possibly be, okay? So when we talk about remainders in polynomials, if you divide, divide by a quadratic, then the remainder, the biggest it can be, is going to be linear. If I divide it by a cubic, good lord, I hope you never ever have to divide by a cubic, but if I did, then I, I would expect that the remainder would have a maximum degree of two. Does that make sense, or one less? Okay. 